Kaplan. My name is Natalie Madison. I am the owner of Artisan Cakes. I'm so glad you guys are here in the classroom with me. Super excited we get to have classes again, because this is my jam. The hand position makes a huge difference on our final piping result. Some things we're gonna pipe straight up and down. Others we need to turn at a 45 degree, and others are almost flat. When we get to piping little pearls, we're gonna be almost flat against our board. And then the next thing we want to do is prepare our bags to hold our piping tips. Couplers come in two parts. It's a coupler and the twist cap. The interior coupler will slide down into my bag as far as I can get it. I'm gonna press it in nice and tight and then the very first thread, I'm gonna mark it with either my thumbnail or my scissors. And I'm gonna make a nice indentation right there so I can see it. Because now I'm gonna back that coupler out. I can see that line and that is my guide for cutting my bag. That ensures that it has just enough material to come over the first one or two threads of the coupler. Now to fill our bag, we're gonna take that bag and turn it halfway inside out. And prepare to scoop a good portion of this into our bags. Now, I don't like to do more than this amount. So basically, this half amount. By doing more than that, it's going to squeeze out of my hands, it's gonna squeeze out the bottom and out of the top. So I pick up a spoonful of icing, place it inside of that bag, close my fingers around it, and then pull that spoon out. All right, during this class, I'm gonna ask you to hold your bag to certain degrees. So the first thing I want you to do is just lift this bag. For those of us who have smaller hands especially, we only want enough icing that fills the palm of our hand. That means the rest of it's gonna hang out the side of the bag. In the industry, we're taught to split that bag to only what we can hold in our hand. And that's enough for us to have good squeeze control without squeezing from way back here. We're having to use all of our arm muscles too. Just to demonstrate, 90 degrees are gonna be straight up and down. If I mention 45 degrees, that means we're gonna lay it over about halfway. And then I'm gonna say flat occasionally. And that's gonna mean resting your knuckles right on that board. And then when I go to squeeze, squeeze pressure, um, I know some people think they have to squeeze all fingers at once. What happens is it squirts out both ends. So we almost wanna think about squeezing in succession. So index down to pinky. It's a lot faster than that. It's kind of like a little pump, but we wanna squeeze from the top down as we're squeezing. Again, that's exaggerated. Nobody's gonna squeeze like that, but those are the muscle actions. I want to just pipe just some blobs right here on our practice board. And the first thing I wanna do is raise my hand up straight up and down perpendicular. And we're gonna hover above the board just a tiny bit. And we're gonna squeeze a small Hershey's Kiss straight out. We're gonna let that icing connect and we stop squeezing and we lift up. So this is a lot of our straight on technique. We're never straight down on the board because then it just smashes out and goes all kind of weird. Great. We always want to hover slightly above and then squeeze out. And that'll give us a nice round dot. Again, if I squeeze and I'm touching the board, then it just kind of goes flat and it gets all clogged up inside that tip. And we want to avoid that. All right, now I'm going to scrape this off. And that's where I use my angled spatula. Put it over here in my bowl. Next up, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna open our bag up to 45, 45 degrees. And this was 90 degrees, and now I'm gonna open my hand up to 45. This time, that coupler needs to rest on the board surface. So if I were to look at this from the side view, that coupler is touching the board. I'm going to squeeze icing out the back without moving any of this gonna squeeze icing and let it build up. Squeezing, build up. And then I can stop squeezing and come forward. Try that. Squeeze, build up, stop squeezing, move forward. Squeeze, build up, stop squeezing, move forward. So that was 45. 
So our next one, we're gonna go almost flat. So we're gonna try to push it as flat as possible and squeezing and building up. It's exactly the same thing, but it's just a little bit lower. My knuckles are on the board itself. So this is the beginning of muscle memory and understanding of perpendicular 45 and then flat. And different, different hand positions change the way this looks, even if I'm using the exact same piping pressure over and over. And now we're gonna switch over to a piping tip. The number 10, we place it onto our coupler top and then add the twist cap to lock it in place. We're gonna bring our bag up to a full 90 degree and pipe just a few little Hershey's kisses. Side by side, touching if you can. That means I have to hover a little bit off the board. Build up solid pressure and release that pressure as I lift up and away. I also, for these little dots, I split my bag even closer. So I'm even closer to the tip because I don't want to have to squeeze from behind. That causes me to shake. All right, so the first trick to not have tires is to make sure that I'm hovering above the surface and then piping until I can fill that surface, then stop, and then raise. I'm not moving my piping tip until I have filled in the space with the amount of icing that I want. Then I can raise that tip up. Now we're gonna take that same idea and instead of being perpendicular, we're gonna go 45 degrees. But I'm gonna hold my piping tip and attempt to create a dot. Stop and then pull away. Then I'm gonna backfill right up against it and pull away. Backfill, then pull away. So I am piping in a blob of icing then I stop and then I'm pulling away. And I always stop piping before I start moving away from it. All right, so most of us have a little dot that's hanging out up there, right? Like it's got a little hook or a little point. We can fix that by dropping our hand all the way. So now, if I have my knuckles on the surface and I'm piping my first dot, it's always ugly because it wants to scooch around. So we just make that first ugly one. We're gonna call it the ugly one. It goes in the back of the cake. Then I can pipe the second one and backfill right to it and drop my tip down just a little bit as I'm moving forward. So I'm filling, drop that tip down and then come forward. Filling, drop that tip down, back filling, drop that tip down. That helps the second piping cover up the little point of the first piping. So even though I'm creating my first dot, I'm gonna give myself, like I come quite a way, just like at least half the length of the next dot. And then I backfill that and then stop and pull away. I've got a lot of space there. Then I can fill in the next curl. So give yourself just a little more space to backfill. All right, so we're doing really good on these. I don't want you to be stuck on them. I think I want to swap out the piping tips. We're gonna do the same things, but with a star tip. So the first thing we're gonna do is just pipe some straight up and down stars. So 90 degrees, hovering above the board slightly, Pipe a star, stop, and lift. Pipe a star, stop, and lift. Now we're gonna get fancy with it. Still 90 degrees, still 90 degrees straight up. We're going to begin Piping a little star right in the middle, and then we're gonna rotate around into a spiral.
And then if you do the second one, you've got to give yourself lots of room. And begin piping in the middle and curl it around for your final rosette. Now we're going to take that idea, that idea, and we're going to create C shapes. So instead of going all the way around that spiral, we're actually going to stop. I'm going to take that tip and I begin my spiral and then I pull out a tail and it's still pretty much perpendicular. So a little spiral and then pull out my tail. All right, this next one, we're gonna shorten it up. We're gonna shorten it up and we are going to create this effect. So we're gonna go around one direction and then up and over. So the way I think about this, still straight up and down, I'm going to start piping and I'm gonna go counterclockwise and stop. Then I'm going to go clockwise and stop. Counterclockwise and stop. Clockwise and stop. Creating opposite directions. And now I'm gonna make these really short, really short. So to do that, I'm going a half round, just like I need the one, and then up and over. Down, up and over. Down, up and over. Down, up and over. Now we're gonna do some basic shells. And those basic shells, instead of being straight up 90 degrees, we're gonna open our hand up to 45 or even flat. It's just like what we were doing the pearls earlier. Just like the pearls. We're gonna start by backfilling that icing. Create a little blob. First one's always ugly because it wants to scooch. And then stop squeezing and pull it forward. The second one will attach. I start halfway over. So I'm not starting up against it. I'm moving way down and back filling and then pulling forward. I find that shells are so much easier when I go faster. The slower and more intentional I am, the harder it is. If I go fast, it looks much better. Here's what it looks like. All I'm doing is lifting my tip. It kind of looks like I'm bringing it back and then forward, but I'm not. I'm lifting my tip up. Ready to move to the next one? All right, we're gonna change tips. We are now going to switch out for the 104 tip, which is the long teardrop tip. Teardrop end makes contact with the surface. So when we're using this as a ruffle, the teardrop, not the point, but it's always going to touch the surface. The point is aiming at my chest or my chin. So it's aiming here. As I squeeze, I'm gonna create myself a little U shape. And then I can create another U shape. Hard part's getting them all the same length, right? So, so first, I'm just creating a little U shape down the line and this edge is lifted up because the point was at my chest chin area. If it's squishing up on itself, raise the pointy end up toward your nose. So raise it up even more. Yours is great, like it has good lift. It's a nice ruffle. But if it feels like it's touching the surface, we can raise the point toward our nose. The next one, we're gonna layer right on top of this. Now, if you have a hard squeeze, you can squeeze it and ruffle it. I do not have a good luck at making it squeeze and ruffle. I have to make it ruffle, and I do that by moving my wrist up and down as I'm piping. I have to put that fat end down, 
and then I have to I have to move my tip in the zigzag. I have to move it up and down so that I can finish filling in the ruffle. I'm always jealous of those people who can just naturally squeeze a ruffle. You do want to make sure that the teardrop always holds connection on the board. Oh. If you lift up, then if you're doing this on the side of a cake, you run the risk of your ruffle falling off the side of that cake. When I'm doing this on cakes, that teardrop fat in is digging into the icing so that I make good connection. That way I know for sure that it is not gonna fall off. And then my second one, I'm still getting good connection. I'm making sure that teardrop is touching the surface. While you've got the ruffle tip out, let's do a ruffle compound using our template. And that's this bottom right here. We're gonna start by creating two layers of ruffle on top of each other. The, the bottom one can be straight if you want, or you can do two sets of ruffles on top of each other. And then our second ruffle on top of that. Sometimes the shallower, they're not so deep, the easier they are. Up and over. All right, up next is some little detail right on top. The template has a pearl border with a tiny little round, that tiny little round. You could also do any one of those shell borders. I would say maybe the tiny little shell. So if I, I'm gonna switch over to the shell. As soon as I realize what I do with my coupler, I must have thrown it on the ground too. There it is. I'm going to finish off the top with some form of shell or pearl border. You can do a straight shell, just a little tiny version. You can also do a reverse C if you want to. Or you could do just a little piped pearl on top of there, single little dots. You can also do just the straight up and down star, the 90 degree star if you wanted. Then we're gonna tackle the double string of pearls with the over pearls, over pearls. So we begin with one row of pearls using the number 10, but piping them kind of small. So keeping them a little dainty. And the second one goes right up above it. Turn my hands the right way. This is gonna be at a 45 degree. The next part of this is piping smaller pearls up and over. And for a lot of us starting out, um, if we change over to that little number four tip, that number four tip, and kind of draw out where we want our baby pearls to go. So I can see my pearls should come up and over here. So I can begin piping the line that goes up and over. That's my guideline. And then maybe I have another one that goes up and over. And I'll use that to pipe my little pearls right on top of. And with this smaller tip, you'll have to clean off the tip probably pretty often. Otherwise it'll grab and curl the icing around the tip if it's got any little blobs. 
And even though I'm working up this little string, I still have to make sure that I'm turning my tip so that it's at a 45 and building up icing toward the dot. So if I wanted to do a straight line, I would make a connection point, lift up, pipe. So just to recreate that, it begins by making a connection point, lifting up, squeezing while maintaining like the same pressure all the way across. So you can use either a shell tip or the round tip. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna switch over to the small shell tip and I'll begin by making contact, a little spiral, and then over to the point. And then what I do is I do this same motion all the way around the cake. So I do the one motion all the way around, yep. So I wouldn't try to do it and then do this because it breaks my rhythm, breaks my rhythm. So I'll do that and then I'll move over to the next one and be like, okay, here we go. So after I get the first two, now I get to play with it. So maybe I do another one that comes up and I'm hovering over, kind of like I did with a straight line, and connects. So again, it's straight up and down, and then connects. Then I can come in and add a little reverse C's in there. That was one direction C's, not two different directions, with two little shells. And then the top line, I can do the same thing. Little shells that come down to the point. But I always do one movement all the way around the cake first, then come back with the next element of the pattern, then the next element. That way I can hold that rhythm. Let's do something similar on this bottom row. This is the larger tip, the larger star tip. Let's create some of these large reverse C's with their long tails. These are the reverse C's with long tails. One goes up, one goes down. And then add additional elements on top of that. So I'm gonna start this bottom row. My bag is straight up and down, perpendicular. Create my tail. Then the other direction, create my tail. Other way, tail. And then the final one. Create that and then create additional parts and pieces that can fit on top of that. You can use the smaller star tip, you can use the pearls. This one, since I'm going one direction and the other, I'm gonna skip. So this one went up and over, and then I did my little detail. I'm gonna skip over here to this other little piece because they are the same, but I have to do something different in there. Then our last border set is a compound basic shell with reverse C's above that. So I switched tips again, I'm with the smaller tip because I'm, there's no way I'm gonna make these be as small as that. So I switched tips. And now I'm in the small shell. Nice long tails. And now I can do my little reverse C's right up above it, right up above that. Perpendicular for the spiral, 45 for the standard shell. You can find all of the tools and supplies seen in this video on our website at artisincakes.com.